Jenny, will you be the tour guide? Oh, uh, my name is Bobby. She's okay. still in there. Okay. Nature and art. 
And some people think this may be the, um, uh, slipping my mind, what, what is that? House of Yes, yes. Um, which it may be, but they also created a book plate for the library that we still use to this day. And, um, and so we have been places that, uh, it's in a place of honor. One of the first pieces of art that was put in this building after it was built um, in 1910. And we're going to talk about the building a little more. Uh, James Lake, if many of you are familiar with San Francisco history, is, is a pretty prominent name in the Bay Area. At the time of his death, he was the richest man in California, and he helped support um, multiple uh, organizations, including ours. He gave us $10,000, which at the time was, I don't know, a lot. Much more. <laughs> Much more than $10,000. But he also contributed money to the Conservative Conservatory of Flowers, the Academy of Sciences, the Lick Observatory, and um, he also donated a plot of land very close to here that we used for some of our industrial fairs. Okay, so we are going to make our way up the tour. We're going we're gonna to go up to the fourth floor. We can take the elevators if anybody's um, so motivated. We can go up four flights of stairs. Um, we'll, then we'll make our way down into the library. There will be some stairs. Um, you're always welcome to take an elevator. Um, but, and if you ever have any questions about the tour, just don't hesitate to ask. Fourth floor, yes. Okay. It'll be a, a big open space. There will be a library open space. So we'll go and see the library. Um, fourth floor is not the library. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little height if you take the stairs. Maybe I'll do it. I try every day. I'll, I'll do it. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll be there too. Huh? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So if any of you possibly looked us up online, you may have seen our skylight and our spiral staircase. Is that everyone? Mm -hmm. I shouldn't try to hit the stairs when I'm doing a tour. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So, a little bit about our organization. We, we own this building. This is our seventh home, um, second on this location. The, one, the building that was here prior to this one burned down in the earthquake and fire. So this building was completed in 1910, and many of the original features. Uh, this staircase was built, it's cast iron, it was built on the East Coast and shipped around the Cape Horn, and, in, and it was a kit. So they put it together and installed it here as one of the early pieces of the building, which is steel frame, uh, brick and limestone. Um, these tiles here on the floor are also original. As are um, the stairwells that go across up to the floor. Which is, um, this kind of is interesting here, this little pine cone, because you can see the wear and tear over the hundred years of use. So people would come down, usually staff or tenants, and look around. Um, so we, again, own this building. We are a nonprofit, but we're not state funded. So we uh, really rely on memberships, rental income, and our endowment slash donations. Um, the first, the ground floors are retail tenants. There is a clothing store. We will very soon have a bar on the other side. Then the library is on two levels. This is our event space and also where the chess room is, and we'll take a peek at that. And then five through nine are tenant offices, and our tenants can range from lawyers, therapists, um, nonprofits, um, startups. Um, we do still have vacancies if anybody's <laughs> looking for an office. And um, we do also rent out this big meeting room here and a boardroom down the hall. So if you're ever interested in conference rooms. These are the two hour events spaces? Yeah, we'll take a peek. That's, that's where you do your talk? You do your talk today? Yes, so um, yeah. that's the next thing on the agenda. Good transition. Um, so this fourth floor, we call this the meeting room. This is where we'll have many of our programs. And you can see our, the bulletin board here. We might have book talks. We have storytelling showcase that's very popular. Um, we'll do writers' events uh, in the boardroom, which is smaller, um, which is this picture here. Looks closed, so I don't think there might be someone in there. Um, book groups, we offer, um, there's a cookbook club. There's, there's always new book groups, writing groups that spring up, so I can't name them all, but they're all good. And they <laughs> And they use this room and we can begin. No, no, we can't. <laughs> what we don't have, um, what we do is not being rented, or we are not having an event. This room is open for people to have for lunch, friends with their friends, or to gather. This week we're having a chess camp, so there are families here waiting for their students. And, but that's what the purpose of this room is when we're not being, when it's not being used for a program otherwise. Who did you say the F floor is for? Is that the fifth floor? Five through nine are tenants. Yeah. Fifth floor is mostly our staff offices. No. And there's, there's a projector that comes down and you can see the displays, um, microphones, there's wireless. The Institute has a fiber network. Um, the bar would be open if you rent out the space, so. Okay, so, we'll make our way over here. As I mentioned, the boardroom is in here. This is closed for some reason, so I don't want to pick it so much. Um, there were pictures in there of our industrial fairs. I mentioned how James Lick had lend, uh, donated land to us. We sponsored industrial fairs beginning in 1857 all the way to 1899, and at the time these were similar to what a state fair. Um, and a lot of different Companies would come and show their wares. At the time, it would have been like Levi's, Bodine, 
Ghirardelli, a, a lot of the original San Francisco companies would, would show their wares at these industrial fairs. And if you're interested, on the fifth floor, we have a whole bunch of photo, a photo exhibit of those fairs. Okay, we're gonna peek into the chess room. I know that they are doing a camp, but we can... So is anybody a chess player interested in chess? <laughs> okay, so um, our chess club, as I mentioned, is the oldest continuously running chess club in the United States. Um, we offer many programs, including uh, scholastic programs in schools where we send coaches out to teach. We have many tournaments, at least one a week. Uh, we offer classes for women, we offer classes for beginners, we also offer other classes. This is Alex, he is our chess director, in case you want to share a little knowledge. Um, it, when we're not doing classes, people are welcome to come in and play. Um, it's pretty quiet right now, I don't know if we scared everyone away, but um, mm -hmm. usually there are people here playing. These tables actually also happen to be original. Um, these, these ones, not, not some of these other ones here. And if you go into the hallway and look at some of our pictures, you'll, you'll see the table, although they had a hole here, which I think were meant for pictures for the pieces, but over time I ended up kind of being cast. So we covered them all. And, um, so yeah, so these are original. Um, I think almost every well-known chess player in the world has come by? Mm -hmm. Who's the name? Um, every world champion barring two has been here. Mm -hmm. um, so Bobby Fischer played here, um, his rival Boris Jansky played here, um, and the, not Magnus Carlsen, who might be one you might know, um, but almost every world champion, almost any chef, or any chess players or chess fans was yeah. Uh, Gary Kasparov? Kasparov? No, there's actually a story. He was giving a talk. He's the other one. He was giving a talk um, at the hotel, just like a block away from here. And a bunch of the players went and tried to convince him to come here and say you would only do it for $10,000. Uh, um, and there's a lot of stories like that about Kasparov, not just that one. So, um, <laughs> so not Kasparov. It's a little outside of our uh, budget. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions about the Jets Club? How many members? How many, How many members? Yeah, well, the, the institute as a whole. So we join the Mechanics Institute. If you join the Mechanics Institute, you're joining the library, you become a member of the Chess Club, and you're able to attend about 90% of our free. I think right now, paid members, and it would be like an individual amount of passes, 1,400. Um, could give or take a couple hundred. Um, if we count everyone, life members, family, it's probably closer to like 30, 500, mm -hmm. 200. So um, we and do. Our tournaments sell out regularly. Yes. Um, yeah. You get a so discount. This room, like last time, this whole room was full. Yeah. All right. Yeah. If with the membership, you get a discount to the tournament. So for chess players, it really is to your benefit to join the institute. And membership isn't really that much. It's, it's 150 for an individual per year, and then a household is 225. That's right, and it pays for itself with chess very quickly. Mm -hmm. When you play regularly in tournaments, it is crazy not to do it. Yeah. 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 As a librarian, it also pays for itself in the library. <laughs> <laughs>
I am very interested in chess books. So those can be very expensive, and we have the yes. second biggest collection in the U.S. So, right. yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we'll pass by the chess collection once we're in the library. Do you like the chess books that are in the library? Yes. Can we do that if you're not a member? No. Yeah, we're going to check those out. Yes, yeah. And you had a question? I, I don't know that term, but I've been told that every chess player has something like the chess equivalent of a Kevin Bacon number. That's true. It, it, I, it's, it's called the Morphe location. number. What? Um, it's called the Morphe number. Paul Morphe was a famous chess player in the U.S. in the 1800s. And so people track how many degrees of separation you are over oh, a chess okay. game from Paul Morphe. So do locations also have it? Did, was, did, did he play here? Or? No, he was a little too early. Um, I don't think he ever came to the West Coast. Um, and he quit in like I want to say like the late 1850s, so a little too early to come here. Um, he did a tour of Europe in the late 1850s, and then he quit um, young. Anyway, he was, you can read stories about him. He was a character. Um, but um, the institution itself doesn't have a number, I guess. But if it did have a number, I would think it's probably like two or three. Um, but people do track their own number, yeah. Um, are those the world's chess champions? Is that, is that no, so back in the olden days, um, when we would have like the tournament that was last night, so you played one game every Tuesday for that specific tournament. So you can come also online order the week and come and check the standings. And it used to be that we would keep track of the standings manually on that, but um, that's too much. But I see a Steve Fisher. Well, those are old ones from old <laughs> tournaments, yeah. so um, we just put them up because it was sitting there empty. Uh, but, <laughs> but, but, but they're not actually in use, oh. yes. But there is one for Bobby Fischer, right. and I'm not sure if that's original or if it was made later, like because he played here. Um, it's a different color. But it does look older, so yeah, I know I've thought about this, but um, I don't have proof either way. Has Deep Blue ever played here? Deep <laughs> Blue has not played here, although there was some suspicion that Stockfish was playing uh, here and we had to get a, um, a metal detector um, <laughs> a couple years ago um, for one of the players, yeah. But that's very unusual, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, any other questions about the chess room or the fourth floor in general? Okay, we're going to make our way to the library. This time it's downstairs. <laughs> Um, so you, again, you can take the spiral, just one level, or take the elevator, but we'll meet on the third floor and um, in the library. So That's a good there. question. I mean, I think that probably most of them, you know, you do learn how to like visualize the chessboard in your head. I think it might be that photo there where you can see the original tables. Oh, with the holes. Yeah, and uh, there's spittoons. <laughs> um, we also removed those. Here's a portrait of Randall Halliday. Wow. Okay, are we all here? I think so. Um, okay, so this is the third floor of the library. Um, you can see we have two levels here. Uh, a 
little bit about our collection. And, and when we started as a trade school in 1854, I mean, our, our goal was really to train people in skilled labor. Um, in 1906, we decided to merge with the Mercantile Association, which had more of a general interest humanities collection. Mm -hmm. So at that time, our collection really became well, much more well-rounded. So we continue that today where we have what you might find in a public library. So fiction, CDs, um, non-fiction. This is our new book table here. Um, our library, for of our services, we also offer public computers. We have um, newspapers, magazines. We offer fiber Wi-Fi. And you can see how people can come here and use our network. Morningstar and Valley Line, and we also have Ancestry Online, and um, but lots of other databases if one wanted to just use our services. Um, over here, for the Halliday fan, we have him in a place of honor. Um, again, he was our president for 14 years. He was also very instrumental in the growth of San Francisco's uh, early culture and um, educational enrichment. He was one of the founding regents of UC Berkeley and also helped found the San Francisco public library system. Um, he helped with the creation of the cable car system in San Francisco and also um, uh, built many suspension bridges throughout California. So I don't know how many still exist, but um, the twisted wire rope his father had invented. And he mm -hmm. kind of just took that and mm -hmm. really expanded upon its use. What is his name? Andrew Halliday. Edgar. Andrew Halliday. Andrew Halliday. Yeah. Um, okay, so again, we look out into the space, you'll see the balconies. When this building was completed in 1910, after the earthquake and fire, um, these were big, tall, open seats. Um, as a library, then five years we quickly outgrew that, and balconies were put in here. And then, as we make our way down, you'll see two balconies on the second floor, which was which is our main floor, and it just was like soaring ceiling you know, and just open space. But for a library, it just wasn't really practical. So as we make our way down, I'll show you some features that kind of show where those design elements were taken away. <laughs> Um, any questions about this, the third floor? Two levels, but five. Five stories. Five 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 yeah, so this would count as two. Well, on every floor, there's more library. Yes, yeah. So we would go down to the second floor, there's two balconies on that side. picture here I like to point out just shows what the space looked like without the balconies. I believe this is this pillar, so it just kind of gives you an idea. And we also have many of these original tables. <coughs> See, like over there. Okay, um, so we're gonna go down. These aren't exactly steep, but they're a little narrow, so um, we'll just make our way down.
point out several different things. Number one, um, you can see the arches here that got covered over. Um, once we built in these balconies, we, you can see across here where the glass from the second floor would have corresponded to the glass here. Um, there are tiles that at one point would have been clear. Um, once we start getting down, you'll see how it was painted over and there's a couple of uncolored blocks in the back. Um, these were, when they were installed, were meant to emit light. So electricity wasn't widespread at the time. And so the, these are actually, if you've ever come across glass tiles, it's really a representative of a, build, of a building um, from the Industrial Revolution age. And glass tiles as flooring in particular was very rare. Um, generally, you'll see it on walls and whatnot. Yeah. Also, our chess collection is here, which is why, also why we have a table. Um, as Alex mentioned upstairs, we have one of the largest collections of chess material, and this is really only a portion of it. We also have an archive that has um, a special collection of other rare chess books, plus rare books of our history, uh, member ledgers that might have survived the earthquake and fire, um, an Arium Press collection, and just other special collections we keep in the archives that people can always request to see, but um, they're just kind of tucked away down there mm -hmm. for safety. Other than the chess and the, the history of the Institute, are there other special collections or areas that the library collections focus on? We, we have a collection of San Francisco history, Western Americana, um, strangely, a Civil War collection. Um, the Aryan Press books, which are very oh. rare and extensive, so we have those in our archives. Um, and I think it, there are seven special collections, so Chess, Mechanics Institute, Industrial Affairs, the Aryan Press, Western Americana, um, <coughs> Civil War, and San Francisco. Yeah. What is the Aryan Press? They're a rare book uh, publisher here in San Francisco, they make every book by hand. So I think mm -hmm. for every release, it might take a year or two. Well, no, that's not true because we just got a subscription. I think they do three volumes a year, but not a wide release. So you can't just, I mean, you may be able to buy their books in the bookstore, yeah. but. You generally have to be a subscriber. Yes, you generally. Like sign up for multiple years worth of books. And yeah. They're hundreds of dollars per book. Mm -hmm. so and they're beautiful. Okay. What kind of things are they? Not oh, fiction? they. Th so their two most famous ones are uh, a Bible, and Moby Dick are the ones that are the most. In fact, the Moby Dick one is so well regarded that UC Press did their own version where they just took pictures of the pages, <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's fifty bucks, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, a lot of fiction. Uh, they just did actually, and then even nonfiction, so like Sea of Cortez by um, Steinbeck and his biologist buddy, and can read They went into Sea of Cortez and a lot of life and there's a story and some science there yeah they have um they did one book i'm not sure which of edgar Allan poe but they actually had bricks from his house that they ground up and like put it as part of the book cover <laughs> yeah so it's mm -hmm. it's that like special. that special that rare um so are they oversized like they're pretty they're yeah. pretty large okay. and some are you know it's it's not just your traditional book and and they give tours they're in the presidio Yes, they, <laughs> I think, are they moving or they just moved to the Presidio? Oh, well, if they are, if they are now, they've been in the Presidio, so if they're moving, they might be leaving. They're moving, and I think they're going to move more centrally located in San Francisco, and are hoping that they'll be able to do more tours. Um, A-R-I-O-N. Yes. Not like Arian. No, not like Arian. <laughs> no. I'm probably saying it wrong. And, and they came and did a talk just a That's couple right. of weeks ago. Yeah. Arian. It might be Arian. I, I'm I don't sure. know. I don't but know it's, spelled, it's spelled <laughs> A-R-I-O-N. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like Clarion. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to make our way down. There's a staircase here. I always lose people on this next balcony. <laughs> so um, we'll just walk slowly, and then we'll, we'll make it down to the main floor of the Where library. Yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> um, as we come down the stairs... You can take a peek right. at the, <laughs> the glass <laughs> tiles <laughs> and hear how it would have looked had we not painted it.
from the <coughs> other glass. Oh, wow. No, it's it has like originally commissioned wood carvings. Yeah. Oh. Maybe. Yeah, that's. Yeah, yeah, but all originally commissioned for that edition. So it's like the paper is the fact that it's all letter press printed. It's the fact that they like the design of box. ceiling. These windows probably corresponded with the ones that were on the other side. Um, so we're not sure, well 1915 was when these were installed. I'm not sure when they decided to paint over everything. Um, but you can see how this floor has the most decorative features versus the higher floors and that was just common in, in the times where the lower floors really were the more beautiful spaces as you moved up, it got less and less. Not to say the ninth floor isn't nice, it, it really is. There are vacancies there. <laughs> <laughs> and the ninth floor has tall ceilings and, and similar decorative mm. features, but the middle floors we lack some of those features. Um, so the collection on this floor is probably some of our most popular, which include fiction, DVDs, we have our audiobooks, Along the window over there are new books. Um, this table, here, this display here, we like to feature members who have pu have published materials, and that would include Jack London, T.J. Styles, um, Ambrose Bierce, and many others who you might see on this display. So if you become members and you publish a book, <laughs> we can put that up for you. Um, this map over here is one of our prime possessions. This is known as the Bridges map, um, and it is from 1854, which is the year of our founding. We are not included in it, obviously, because um, that was just when we were founded. But you can see these images here are just representative of, building, of what buildings looked like at the time. Um, the city of San Francisco is much larger now, and this is really just kind of the water line. You can get close and peek around. Um, <coughs> I believe this is where the land was at the time and where they anticipated building, but San Francisco really is like, we're way out here now. And um, this is not where we were located at the time, but where we are currently is right here. And you can see how close to the water we would have been had the city not got filled mm -hmm. in at the time. Yeah. Do you know what the green represents at all? Um, Stephen. Yeah, it, it, it's you have to rotate the map 90 degrees clockwise because it's not the typical orientation. Right. North is to the right, mm -hmm. south is to the left, west is up, and east is down. And do we know what the green is trying to indicate? Uh, no, I wish I knew. Okay. Hmm. We have done a couple of different talks with the map specialist yeah. um, on this map, and hopefully we can do a, a 
again sometime in the future. Um, but yeah, he really got into like the granular details of what this, what, what every line represented. <laughs> um, I've seen a copy, well not a copy, I've seen another of these maps at the Old Mint, and ours is in by far much better condition. Okay. There's was like torn here, you couldn't see any of the buildings on the bottom, there's just water damage. And although you can see some water streaks here, um, which I was told are remnants of the earthquake and fire, this was one of the things that survived. And this is a, um, the, our map is in much better condition than the one that was on display at the mid. in a while, but um, you know, this is kind of our uh, archival display, and this being one of our um, prized possessions. In addition to some of the posters you might see around that represent um, awards from the Hispanics to industrial fairs, and then there's also other pictures. The painting over there is actually the taken fire, and you might see some other pictures throughout the building that So um, to utilize our services other than just a visit, tour like this, or coming to a special event, you do need to be a member. And a member would entitle you to use the library, to access the Wi-Fi, to be a member of the chess club, and to be able to attend most of our events at a, at, for free or at a, at a discount. Um, Stephen here or I can help sign anybody up for membership if you're interested, or if you just want information, I know most of you took a folder from the lobby. Um, but for the most part, that's really a big overview of the Martin Institute. And if you had any specific questions, feel free to ask me, or Stephen as well. Generally not. Um, yeah, to utilize the institute, you would need to be a member. You could, if the fourth floor was open, take your friend up there and do some work down there. People can come and talk about being a member. Yes, you can. And you can always see our events online and sign up. You don't have to be a member to attend events. Is there a discount on the rental fees if you're a member? If you're a member, you get a discount on rental fees. <laughs> if you're a tenant, you get a discount on rental fees. And you get to be a member. <laughs> From the, if, so you were going to join today, it would be for a year from the end of July.